Princess Pulverizer. Grilled Cheese and Dragons. Princess Serena, or Princess Pulverizer as she prefers, does not want to be a princess. She wants to be a knight. But first she must complete a quest of kindness and prove she has what it takes to be a hero. When a mysterious thief steals the queen's jewels, Princess Pulverizer knows that retrieving them is the perfect good deed to begin her path to knighthood. But can she save the day by herself? By Nancy Krulik. Chapter 1. Princess Serena! Lady Frump shouted angrily. Come down from there right now! Princesses do not hang from the ceiling. But the royal princess of Imperia was not ready to come down. She didn't want to sit at the table with her classmates, learning about the proper manners to use at a tea party. Who cared how you held your pinky when you picked up your teacup? Tea parties were no fun at all. But swinging from the rafters, now that was fun. The princess began swaying back and forth over the heads of the other girls in her class. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. She swung her legs higher and higher in the air. Whee! The princess shouted down to her classmates. You guys should really try this. It's amazing. I feel like I'm flying. The girls stared up at her in surprise. No one disobeyed Lady Frump. Ever. She was the toughest, scariest teacher at the Royal School of Ladylike Manners. But Lady Frump didn't frighten the princess at all. Nobody frightened her. She was the bravest girl in all of Imperia, maybe even in the whole world. So she just kept swinging back and forth, back and... Whoa! The princess let out a loud yelp as she lost her grip on the rafters. Splash! The princess's royal bottom landed right in a big bowl of ooey-gooey purplish pomegranate pudding. Smash! Spoons, forks, knives, teacups, and saucers crashed to the floor. There was broken china everywhere. The princess looked up at Lady Frump. The teacher's face was beat red. Her eyes were tightened into tiny angry slits and she was clutching her handkerchief in a sweaty fist. Oops, the princess said sheepishly. Now look what you've done, Lady Frump scolded. Why didn't you come down carefully when I asked you to, Princess Serena? Well, for one thing, that's not my name, the princess replied. I've told you that a million times. A few of the girls gasped. <gasps> Serena is the name your father, King Alexander, gave you, Lady Frump reminded her. But it's not the right name for me princess explained. Serena comes from the word serene, and serene means calm and peaceful. I'm neither of those things. Lady Frump couldn't argue with that. Nobody could argue with that. That's why I gave myself a new name, the princess continued. From now on, I want everyone to call me Princess Pulverizer. Princess Pulverizer is not a proper name for a royal girl, Lady Frump told her. Says who? Princess Pulverizer argued. I, I, well, Lady Frump stammered. The girls all stared at Princess Pulverizer in awe. She'd stumped Lady Frump. Amazing. Never mind, Lady Frump said, wiping her forehead with her handkerchief. I'll have two of the scullions from the kitchen come and clean up this mess later. And you, Princess Serena, will help them. Princess Paul Pulverizer gasped with surprise. She wasn't sure which was more shocking. The idea that her teacher would expect her to clean up the mess with the kitchen maids? Or that she refused to call her by her new name? In the meantime, we will head into the ballroom to practice dancing with Saltarello, Lady Frump continued. I want all of you to be able to dance beautifully at the ball next month. Princess Pulverizer frowned as she followed her classmates into the ballroom. The only thing worse than a tea party lesson was a dance lesson. Princess Pulverizer was not a great dancer. She wasn't even a good dancer. Actually, she was a lousy dancer. To make matters worse, the ballroom was right above the courtyard where the boys in night school did their training. The boys looked like they were having so much fun riding on their horses and having sword fights. And here she was, stuck moving her feet to the same beat, over and over again. Tap, tap, hop, tap, tap, hop. Lady Frump repeated as she clapped her hands. Ladies, please dance to the rhythm. We're almost done with this chapter. Princess Pulverizer looked out the window and watched as two of the knights in training drew swords. They began fencing, poking each other's armor with their weapons. Clang, clang! Every time one of the swords hit their metal suits, it made a loud noise that echoed all the way up to the ballroom. Clip, plop, clip, plop! 
Three other boys rode by on horseback. All of them, even the horses, were dressed in armor. Princess Pulverizer scowled. It just wasn't fair. Why did the boys get to wear full suits of armor and ride on horses while she was stuck trying to hop around a dance floor in a silly lace gown? And why did the boys get to wear those valiant visors when they fenced while she was stuck having to balance a tiara on her head as she danced the saltarello? A visor had a purpose. It kept the night safe, but what was the point of a tiara? Tap, tap, hop. Tap, tap, hop. Lady Frump continued. Girls, please pay attention. Tap, tap. Princess Pulverizer tap, tap, hopped her way over to the window for a better look at the two boys who were fencing. One of them was actually pretty good. He moved his feet quickly and was able to block most of the jabs that came from his opponent. From Princess Pulverizer's point of view, fencing didn't look that hard. All you had to do was dance around a little and poke at someone with a sword. A few lunges here, a few steps backward there, a poke, a jab, and maybe a little twirl, just to make it look fancy. What was the big deal about fencing anyway? Lunge, step, poke, jab, twirl, oomph. Whoa, Princess Pulverizer exclaimed as she bashed into one of the girls in her class. Who crashed into the girl on her left, who knocked down the two girls on either side of her, who both collapsed right on top of Lady Frump? Uh-oh. Princess Serena! Lady Frump shouted angrily as she climbed out from under the pile of crowns, shoes, petticoats, arms, and legs. What am I going to do with you? Princess Pulverizer looked down at the purplish pudding stain on her dress. She stared at the wiggling mountain of classmates on the ground, and for once, the princess had no answer for Lady Frump. I think, guys, we can read one more chapter. Chapter 2. I can't believe you've been sent home again, King Alexander of Imperia scolded his daughter later that afternoon. Why can't you behave in school? Because school is boring, Princess Pulverizer told him. Everything we study is useless. Why do I need to know how to curtsy or learn which fork is the right one to use or practice staying on the beat when dancing the saltarello? Because those are the things every princess needs to learn, King Alexander explained. How else will you know how to behave correctly at a banquet or dance at a ball with grace and elegance? But I don't want to be a princess, Princess Pulverizer insisted, and I don't want to go to banquets or balls. I want to rescue damsels in distress and slay dragons. I want to have sword fights. I want to be a knight. Excuse me? The king asked, surprised. A knight, Princess Pulverizer repeated. I want to go out into the world, have adventures, and earn my place among the knights of the scrown table. King is scolding Princess Serena. Princess Pulverizer looked longingly across the room. The scrown table was so beautiful, perfectly square, but with carefully rounded corners, scrowned. The scrown table was where the knights gathered to talk about their exciting quests. Princess Pulverizer wanted nothing more than to sit there among them. To be one of them. I don't need to go to the Royal School of Ladylike Manners to be a knight, Princess Pulverizer continued. I need to go to night school. Actually, knights need to know a lot of the same things you were learning in school, the king told her. Like what? Princess Pulverizer asked. Well, you were learning to dance gracefully, the king replied. Every sword fight is like a dance. A knight who is light on his feet will always win, but a clumsy knight will land on his behind every time. Princess Pulverizer frowned. Hmm, it was kind of hard to argue with logic like that. Although, well, does a knight really need to know which fork to use to eat salad, she asked her father, or how to pour a perfect cup of tea? The king stared at his daughter. It got me there, he admitted. Princess Pulverizer smiled triumphantly. But there are still a lot of th other things you can learn from Lady Frump, the king continued. You need to go back to the royal school of ladylike manners. Princess Pulverizer's eyes flew open wide in surprise. She couldn't believe her father was making her go back to that horrible place. But, 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 you have to let me go to night school, Princess Pulverizer insisted. Why, her father asked her. Because I want to go, Princess Pulverizer told him. And I'm a princess. Princesses always get what they want. Not this time. The king shook his head. I am going to night school, the princess declared. She folded her arms tightly across her chest. No, you're not, the king replied. He folded his arms tightly across his chest. You are going back to Lady Frump. Am not, am not. Am not, Princess Pulverizer started jumping up and down and shouting. I shouldn't have to listen to Lady Frump. She should have to listen to me. I'm the princess. But she is your teacher, the king said. In school, she is in charge. Princess Pulverizer shook her head. This isn't fair, she shouted. You won't let me go to night school because I'm a girl. That's not right. This has nothing to do with you being a girl, King Alexander told her. Princess Pulverizer stopped shouting. She stopped jumping up and down. It doesn't, she asked. The king shook his head. No, it has to do with the fact that you don't have what it takes to be a knight. Yes, I do, Princess Pulverizer insisted. 
I already know how to ride a horse, and fencing doesn't seem hard. With a little training, I'll be able to slay dragons and rescue damsels, as well as any boy in night school. Ah, but there's a lot more to being a knight than riding off on exciting adventures, King Alexander told her. It takes great honor, kindness, and sacrifice. Princess Pulverizer didn't know how to respond to that one. Even she knew that honor, kindness, and sacrifice weren't exactly her strong points. Things were not going Princess Pulverizer's way. Not at all. That didn't happen often. But when it did, the princess knew exactly how to change her father's mind. All she had to do was give him her special face. It always made him smile and laugh and do exactly what she wanted him to do. So Princess Pulverizer cocked her head to the side. She shot her father a broad, lopsided smile. Then she crossed her eyes. A grin shot across King Alexander's face. It was working. The princess smiled a little wider. She crossed her eyes a little harder. The king looked at his daughter's goofy smile and stared into her crossed eyes. Finally, he said, I suppose there's no real reason you can't go to night school. Yes! Princess Pulverizer pumped her fist in the air. The special face had done it again. Princess Pulverizer had gotten what she wanted. Eventually, King Alexander continued, but not today or even tomorrow. Wait, what? Princess Pulverizer dropped her fist and stared at her father, but I don't understand, she said. You have a lot to learn about what being a knight really means, King Alexander explained. You have to earn your way into night school. Princess Pulverizer scowled. This was not the answer she'd been hoping for. How am I supposed to do that? She asked King Alexander. You must go on a quest of kindness, the king replied. A what? Princess Pulverizer asked. A quest of kindness, King Alexander repeated. I'm sending you out into the world. You must show bravery and do nice, unselfish acts for others. Only after you have completed eight good deeds will I allow you to enter night school. Eight? Princess Pulverizer asked, her voice scaling up nervously. That's an awful lot. Where will I find eight people who need my help in Imperia? I mean, we are a pretty small kingdom. You do not have to stay in Imperia, her father told her, but I do not want you wandering too far either. The world is a very big place. So for your own safety, you may only go as far as the mountains to the east and the river to the west. You may travel as far as the ocean to the south and to the canyon in the north. That way you are always near enough, near enough to Imperia so my knights can search for you and save you if I find you are gone for a very long time. Well, I won't need any saving, Princess Pulverizer assured him. Let's hope not, her father replied. So we have a deal then? You will go on a quest of kindness? The quest doesn't sound too awful, Princess Pulverizer thought. After all, she already did lots of good deeds for others. Didn't she always share her Brussels sprouts with the royal dogs when the chef wasn't looking? Although that probably wouldn't count as an actual good deed because the dogs hated Brussels sprouts as much as she did. Still, there was also that one time when the princess had helped, or the day when she... And how about... Aww, maybe this wasn't going to be so easy after all. Unless... Suddenly, Princess Pulverizer got a great idea. What if she just went out into the world and wandered around for a few days? Then when she came back, she could just tell her father she had done eight good deeds. She didn't actually have to do them. Okay, Papa, Princess Pulverizer said with a sly smile. I will go on the quest. Wonderful, King Alexander said. Oh, and one more thing. I will need you to bring back proof of each of your eight good deeds. Princess Pulverizer frowned. How did her father always know what she was planning? How am I supposed to get proof? Princess Pulverizer asked. I'm sure you'll figure it out, King Alexander replied. After all, knights have to be smart as well as brave and kind. But, Princess Pulverizer began to argue. You want to join the Knights of Scround Table someday, right? King Alexander asked her. Oh yes, Papa, Princess Pulverizer said, more than anything. Well, then you'd better get going, the king said as he kissed his daughter on the forehead. Your quest of kindness begins right now. Chapter 3. Here, let me help you carry that heavy basket, Princess Pulverizer said the next morning as she came upon an old woman carrying a basket filled with potatoes. The princess grinned widely as she spoke. She was just beginning her quest and hadn't gotten any farther than a small village on the outskirts of Imperia, yet already she had found someone who appeared to need her help. What luck! Princess Pulverizer tried to take the basket from the old woman's hands, but the woman wouldn't let go. Get your hands off my basket, she demanded. But you have to let me help you, Princess Pulverizer insisted. She pulled harder at the basket. 
Let go of my potatoes, the old woman gripped the basket tightly. I need to do a good deed, Princess Pulverizer explained. She gave another tug and rip, the basket broke open. Thump, 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 potatoes fell into the mud. Look what you've done, the old woman scolded her. My basket is torn. How am I supposed to get my potatoes home now? I'll help you carry them, Princess Pulverizer suggested. I mean, that would be a good deed, right? I think you've done enough, the old woman said. Go on your way. Can I at least take one of these potatoes as a token just to show my father that I tried to do a good deed, Princess Pulverizer asked. First you break my basket, and now you want to steal one of my potatoes? The woman gasped. I don't want to steal it, I just... Princess Pulverizer began to explain, but the old woman didn't let her finish. Help! she shouted. Thief! A crowd of people turned and stared. Uh-oh, any minute now the sheriff would be there. Princess Pulverizer could stay and try to explain to him that she was a princess on a quest of kindness so she could go to night school. But considering no other girl had ever gone on a quest like this, or gone to night school, she figured no sheriff in his right mind would ever believe her. To him, she would just seem like a common thief, especially dressed as she was in a plain cloth tunic and cloak, carrying nothing but a simple knapsack. Oh, why hadn't she at least packed her royalty arrow? If she stuck around, Princess Pulverizer could be in big trouble, maybe even wind up in the local dungeon. So the princess did the only thing she could. She ran as fast as possible. Princess Pulverizer trudged her way up the hill. It seemed like she'd been running for hours. She was very tired. But at least now she was in another village, far from the old lady and her potatoes. So she was safe. Unfortunately, nearly a whole day had gone by and she still hadn't found a single person who needed her help. At this rate, her quest for kindness could go on forever. The princess knelt down by a nearby stream and took a drink of cool, clear water. As she drank, two women came strolling down the path. The queen was absolutely beside herself, remarked the taller woman who wore a pale green dress. Some of the stolen jewels were gifts from her parents and her grandparents. They were priceless. I don't blame her for being upset, replied her friend. The velvet gem-covered box that held the jewels was stolen right out of her room while she was sleeping. I don't understand how that could happen, the woman in the green dress said. The queen's chambers are in the top tower of the palace. She locks her door when she goes to sleep. The only way into her room is through the window. That tower is way too high for any ladder, the woman in the gray cloak added. The thief would have had to be tall enough to actually reach in through the window and grab those jewels. Her friend laughed. That's not possible, she said. No one in the entire kingdom of Schmergermeister is that tall. I doubt the queen will ever see her jewels again, the woman in the gray cloak said. Who would be smart enough to know where to find someone that tall? Or brave enough to get the jewels back from such a thief? A smile began to form on Princess Pulverizer's face. She was smart, and she was brave. That was it, her first task on her quest of kindness. All she had to do was find someone tall enough to reach into a high tower window, retrieve the jewels, and return them to the queen. Easy peasy. Well, it would be if she could figure out who the tallest person in the kingdom of Schmergermeister might be. The princess remembered once reading a story about a tall, scary ogre who lived in an old abandoned castle far up in the hills of a faraway kingdom. The ogre captured princesses and stole jewelry. Hmm, Princess Pulverizer was in a faraway kingdom. Okay, not so far away, but there were hills all around her. Sure, the ogre was just a character in a storybook, but storybook characters had to come from somewhere. Maybe there really was such a thing as a giant jewel-stealing ogre. Princess Pulverizer leapt to her feet and began searching the hills of Schmergermeister for an ogre. It was no easy task. The roads were steep and the ground was muddy. The tall, leafy trees made the forest seem dark and gloomy. But Princess Pulverizer kept walking, searching for a giant ogre. Unfortunately, an hour later, she still hadn't found a single sign of anyone. This really stinks. Another dead end on my quest of kindness. Just as she was about to turn back, Princess Pulverizer spotted something on the ground. It was a footprint. A giant footprint. A footprint so large and so wide, you could fit a family of five inside of it and still have room for their dog. Up ahead, she saw another giant footprint, and another, and another. Princess Pulverizer followed the giant footsteps up a steep, steep hill until finally they led her to the largest castle she had ever seen. It was also the ugliest castle she had ever seen. The wooden windowsills were rotted and lopsided. There were weeds growing all around. It looked like a place hadn't been cleaned in a hundred years. It was the perfect home for an ogre. Quietly, Princess Pulverizer moved closer to the decrepit castle, making sure to stay hidden in the trees. Suddenly, a loud, deep voice echoed through the hills. Shiny! Princess jumped back. Whoa, that was scary. 
But Princess Pulverizer was brave, or at least she was trying to be. I'm not afraid, she thought. I'm not afraid. So shiny, the deep voice boomed, even louder this time. Princess Pulverizer's knees knocked nervously. Her teeth began to chatter. Okay, maybe she was a little afraid, but that wasn't going to stop her. She kept walking toward the castle. She moved closer and closer and closer still. And that's when she saw him, the ogre. He looked just like the one in her storybook. The ogre was big and scary and really, really hairy. Boy, did he need a haircut. The ogre was playing with some shiny gemstones. High atop his big hairy head, he wore a teeny tiny crown. Well, it looked teeny tiny on the ogre anyway. In reality, it was a crown that would fit perfectly on the head of a queen. She had found them, the queen's jewels. Now, all she had to do was get them away from the ogre so she could return them to the queen of Schmeggermeister. Rumble, rumble. Suddenly, the loudest thunder the princess had ever heard echoed through the forest. But the sun was shining. And there wasn't a cloud in the sky. How strange. Rumble, rumble. The ogre rubbed his belly. Me hungry, he grunted. Now, Princess Pulverizer understood. The thunder hadn't been coming from the sky at all. It was coming from deep inside the ogre's empty belly. It was time for his supper. The ogre stood up and headed into his castle. The giant door shut behind him, and there was a click as the lock was turned. Well, now the jewels were in the castle, which meant Princess Pulverizer needed to go in there to get them. But how? It wasn't like ogres just invited knights in training into their castles. Or did they? 